It's Jack Pinter. Matthew, here we are again. Exactly, again and again and again. Recherche la tombe perdue. What are you up to today? He said with some trepidation. Well, I'm just feeding that habit. You know the habit I'm talking about, Matthew. The guilty pleasure, which begins with Z. Yes, Z, Z, it's the Zoom habit. I don't know about you, Matthew. It's my third today. I feel I, I feel relatively addiction free. I've only had two today, but I've had a vast number this week. What are we doing with Zoom? Well, it's just become part and partial of everything, isn't it? And we are a little bit hooked, aren't we? We have to admit. Exactly. So we are we are slight uh, yes hooked on Zoom. Zoom junkies. It's all crazy. So it's become this repeating thing. What's should we riff a little bit on habits? What's that all about? What's that all about? Well, I mean, I think we have to recognize how habit prone we are. And of course, what uh, neuroscientists tell us that we have 60,000 thoughts a day. And tomorrow, you'll have probably have 55,000 of the same thoughts that you have today. So it's hard to introduce a lot of new thoughts into our into our practice. And I, I suppose what what's again, a psychologist tell us by 35, we these habits of form into these regular patterns that we define as a personality. And it's very hard to to create something new uh, to that. So really, and it seems lockdown is some sort of idea sort of amplifying this. Let's face it, apart from Zoom, we are a sort of prisoner within ourselves. We are looking at ourselves. So maybe it's time for reflection about our own weird habits. Any thoughts on that? Yeah, if we're stuck with ourselves, what do we what do we want to do with that? And of course, just like we have all these neural patterns, which are a series of neurons that have learned to fire together. When they fire together, they wire together, and then they give birth to new ones, they sire together. And it's, it's as, as we've been discussing, really, really hard to break a habit. In fact, it may be impossible to break a habit. And if you've ever had the habit of uh, like a smoking habit or an eating habit that you've tried to get out of, or just some simply something that you do habitually in response to tr uh, stress or pressure or anything like that, you know that, that when we use language, it can be very hard to break a habit. Apparently, you know, as NLP tells us, when we, if we say to ourselves, don't smoke, what our brain hears is smoke. I mean, so this becomes really, really difficult. The failure of the negation. And just riffing on that is things like uh, New Year's resolutions don't work. When you attempt to just slam on the brakes and stop a habit, that habit is serving you at a base animal level. It's about survival, Maslow's hierarchy of needs and the rest of it. So you cannot ever stop something, but maybe we can do something with it, such as replace or add. Absolutely. And this all gets down to just the idea of breaking the habit of being yourself. And how do you do that? And the good news from neuroscience is, is that rewiring is possible. We can create new neural networks with practice and uh, to establishing a new habit. You know, there's this sort of this common idea that it took 21 days to establish a new habit. And it's amazing how things become folklore, that this becomes true. Yeah. This was just actually based on the observations of a plastic surgeon <laughs> who found that after he did plastic surgery, it would take people around 21 days to get to grips with the fact that they had a new face, completely not founded in any science or any uh, research. Now, a, a, a little while ago at UCL, right here in London, they did a, a study about how long does it actually take to embed a new habit. And on average, they found that it was around 66 days. Uh, so anywhere, what they found was anywhere from 18 to 254, depending on how stubborn, uh, stubbornly resistant <laughs> people were to, uh, to change. And what I think is interesting, Matthew, is we're kind of right now on 66 days of lockdown. So uh, I wonder if people have embedded... Uh, some new habits just to be beyond the Zoom habit that we talked about. And I'm sure they can put down in the comments, if you have embedded a new habit, drop it down here and we'd be curious <laughs> to see what they are. No, very good. But also just looking at that, and then, then we would get back to maybe how to change what we can, what we can really do. Mm. I mean, we do get a lot more time listening to ourselves as we broadcast those. We broadcast on repeat. My bring your coffee cups down, children. Rant, I'm disgusted with myself, so I have a bit of self-loathing. So there's some stuff I'd like to move away from. Is there any hope for me, Jack? I, I think self-loathing loathing is not a bad trigger, actually. <laughs> you know, I, 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 someone told me about something yesterday. It's, it's a website called Stick. Stick with an extra K on the end. And uh, this is about how to stick a new habit. 
And apparently what you do is you 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 give your credit card details and you promise to donate to an yeah. anti charity. So like if you're a if you're a uh, against gun violence, you would promise to tri- to uh, contribute to the NRA, the National Rifleman's Association. Brilliant. And you basically make a promise. So if you if you promise to run three times a week, if you don't fulfill your promise, you will end up donating to this thing that you hate. And this is the and it's just like the carrot. It's the stick side of the carrot and stick. It's forcing you to do something different by it's sort of anti motivation, which I think is is one interesting idea. Aversion therapy, which well, rather <laughs> reminds me of hypnosis, where you would sort of have a compunction blowout, so people who thought they were addicted to chocolate would just be made to just imagine, just imagine just having more and more and more and more. And you get sick of it. And that's one way out of it. So maybe there's some ideas. So how can we how can we foster something which is going to get us moving? Well, we've got three ways that we're going to share with our, our delighted listeners today, our Zoom fellow Zoom addicts. And I, well, let's start off with the one that we kind of just discussed, this amplification idea. So it's yeah. amplification day. So just to take some habit that you do and amplify it. Like, so for example, I have a habit of tending to hurry. So on my amplification day, I would just hurry through everything. I would just rush through everything and, and probably do everything pretty badly. And maybe use that as a way of showing myself, hey, you know, this habit of hurrying doesn't really is it's not satisfying and it doesn't yeah. really work yeah. Yeah. so taking that to the natural extension would be one way of revealing uh, maybe that this is a habit that i could i could break out of so making it absurd or getting to the level one imagines uh too little doesn't work but proving that too too much is a fairly crazy concept as well i love it and sort of educating ourselves through perception as well any other tricks that we can use well, let's, let's go to the exact, the, the opposite day. Now, I could take, take the same example of hurrying. Like, I actually tried this this morning because I knew we were going to be talking about habits today. So normally I take my dog for a walk and my, my dog sort of wanders off and then I go get him and put him back on the lead, you know, because he doesn't really want to come back. And today I just thought, you know what? I'll just let him be. I'll just wait till he comes back. I'll, I'll take it slow and I'll use this time <laughs> to put the ground or to think and just to, to shift into an opposite mode. So take a habit that you normally do and just think for a day or for an hour or for five minutes, I'm gonna do exactly the opposite. And again, that's, that can be quite, I think you're gonna have quite fun and that can be uh, fun and playful with that. We're saving mental hygiene and lives with this. By the way, there's a Wandsworth man, Carl Honoré, who did, it wrote a fantastic book, In Praise of Slow. So for all those speed fiends in praise of slow by Carl Honoré is a great local read. Fantastic. So we've done opposites. We've done blowout amplification extension. Have we got a third tactic to share with the viewer? Yeah, the, the third tactic is just to kind of become a different character. Love it. Now, this is something that actors do when they when they take on a role. And, I, I, you know, I certainly have an example of a friend of mine, a quite well-known British actor, Michael Pennington, who, when he was playing Macbeth, his girlfriend said, I can't stand you. You're so nasty. You're so violent. And he sort of couldn't help but take on this character uh, as, as a very empathetic actor. So so obviously, we could take on the character from from a film, from a story. I happen to have a very easy way to do here, and I'm going to bring on the prop. I have some archetype cards here. And every once in a while, these are this is Carolyn Mice's archetype set. We can put this down in the link as well. And this morning, I picked a card out of the deck, and I thought, you know what? Whatever card comes up, I'm going to accept it. And you're not going to believe this, Matthew. I'm not lying. I picked up the lover card. <laughs> All our viewers well, I, are going, here he goes again. <laughs> and, uh, you know, this card is about passionate devotion to another person or another thing. And I just thought, okay, I'm just going to adopt elements of this archetype today i'm going to purposefully use this archetype i'm going to do it with my family i'm going to do it with the things that i love doing and and, and curiously matthew cu- coupled with this the my opposite decision to be slow it's like a really interesting day i'm going to spend this day being slow and i'm going to show devotion and 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 passionate commitment to people and to things and in this way i'm going to try to th- see if this is a habit i actually I'm trying on now for size, but yeah. maybe I could yeah. actually bring this in and practice it every day. Maybe I could bring this archetype into my, my daily practice in a way that would enrich me and the people around me and just get me out of the habit of being this, this normal self. 
So like eating in a supermarket, you pick a card, try before you buy. Absolutely. And, you know, there's always an option with a deck of archetypes that if you don't like the one you got, to pick another. No, too right. Too right. So let's uh, let's have everyone being lovers tomorrow. How's that going to work out? How's that going to work out? It does remind me in Venice or other places, they have carnivals. So for 50 weeks of the year, everyone is extremely sensible, kind and, and good to each other. And for two weeks, this mask pseudo anonymity, they utterly do an opposite of compliant, law abiding and moral. There are carnival babies that uh, emerge from this scenario. So it's a sort of combination almost of, you know, those cards and those archetypes, but also the opposites. But guys, that's only two weeks a year. So be careful. Be careful. Definitely try before you buy with parenthood in Venice. You have been warned. Yeah, I think I think that's like just it's, it's mo these momentary releases from ourselves. And it doesn't mean we're next week necessarily going to change everything about ourselves, but try on different things for size and 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 freshen yourself up. Yeah. Uh, now and then. So from disgust with some modest pleasure about how you handled that last dinner conversation. Absolutely, and and you know just to to do the last minute extension of this, we can also do this with our organizations. Lovely. Anyway. We can change the culture of our organizations for a day and see what happens and see see what that would bring. Love it, love it. Which and there, there is some of that, isn't there? We, we like uh, my boys' firm. They do one of these sort of help in the community thing, and suddenly everyone moves from programming and doing PR to helping older people with gardening and stuff. It's it's a very mm. interesting way of of just stretching the boundaries and and redefining stuff. Okay, Absolutely. so do we want to remind you, do we want to set a challenge for the viewer, maybe these three tactics? Well, yeah, so we've got amplification, we've got uh, opposite, and we've got archetypes. So pick one. Pick one, like, maybe let's pick one this week, pick one next week, and pick one the, the, week, uh, the week after. <laughs> and uh, and you, can, you can always uh, the, you know, launch a lawsuit if anything terrible happens. Uh, you heard it here on Dear Captive yeah, Audience. You know this is global, mate. Someone will do that. Hopefully it'll be in Australia where the lawyer's letters won't get through. It'll all be good. It'll all be good. Nice one. And yeah, and if you like something, just try it for 66 and a half days and it'll probably stick. If not, the NRA will get another assault rifle. That's what they need. <laughs> Absolutely. Jack, Jack, mate, you're a superstar. Well done. Really inspiring today, as always. We'll see you in a couple of days, maybe. And viewers, thank you so much for your continued support. Much appreciated from... These two Zoom addicts. Bye for now. See you, Jack. Bye-bye.